to the Atypical Hunter podcast. I'm Chris Begbie, and with me as always is Kyle Mork, who actually isn't here today because he's got a real job that is very important. But we've got a great episode for you nonetheless. Ted Zangerly from The Hunting Public is joining me from Iowa. He's going to head out on the Des Moines River pretty soon for some flathead fishing. So caught him before he went out on the water. He's actually recovering from a construction injury, so I really appreciate him taking some time from healing talk to me today. As a disclaimer, I am totally obsessed with the hunting public and the content these guys put out. They're real people, doing real hunting, having a real good time, and I absolutely love it. Ted and I get into how he started in the hunting public and where it might lead him later this year. Make sure you check them out. I think you're going to enjoy it. So Ted Zangerly, we have on the line here with us. Uh, how's it going, Ted? Good. Uh, how's it going? It's good. Appreciate you taking some time here for for the podcast. I know you and and the lads are pretty busy posting your own content all the time. So I appreciate you uh, you spending some time with me here. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, so you've looked pretty busy, but um, I want to. I usually like to start these off with a question. Um, so to really kick it off, the main thing I want to know is when is that mustache coming back? Oh, the mustache will be back. It'll start growing again about September, probably, I'd say. So you're, okay, you keep, start. keeping it off for the summer and then growing back for some extra insulation in the fall? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did, I shaved it about every day in between the deer tour until the turkey tour. And let it grow throughout the turkey tour, but yeah, just on just during the spring and fall, I'll let it grow. I think uh, I think you and Jake should do like a hashtag stash bros or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty sweet. And see who can grow the best stash over over the next hunting season. <laughs> um, and then saw on the latest video that you messed up your arm pretty good. That's uh yeah. That's healing okay. Yeah, it's healing. I had to get like thirteen stitches. Oof. But it's starting to heal. I think. I so, can feel it itching. Oh, I bet. So I think that's a good sign. Is uh so what what happened with that? I was helping my dad because we have, it's a little bit slower during the summer for us. Mm-hmm. So I went back home and was helping my dad a little bit and. Or making a form for pouring concrete. I went in to cut a piece of wood and just got in a rush, kind of. And for some reason, I crossed my arms while I was using the chop saw and it jumped on me and pulled my arm up into the saw. Oof. So, so how, how deep did it go in there? Probably an inch or a little more. Wow. So that was, that was bleeding pretty good, I imagine. Oh, yeah. It was. It was bleed. It had a pretty nice blood trail behind me. <laughs> if you were if you were a deer, you'd be easy to find. Yeah, it'd have been it'd have been no problem. That's crazy. Well, <laughs> glad glad you made it to the hospital and they they got you stitched up. You said thirteen stitches. Yeah, some in the muscle and then some in on the skin, obviously. But yeah, is that going to affect any kind of movement or anything with the muscle, or are you supposed to heal up pretty good? No, I don't think it will. It, the doctor. Uh, first look, he didn't, it wasn't like he was worried about anything. He didn't seem like. Right. So he said it should be fine. Okay. Well, that's good. That's good news. Um, so I wanted to I wanted to get into a little bit about how you guys got started and um, how you all kind of linked up together. But it looks like I think the first video out on the YouTube channel is back in September of 2017. Were you a part of that then? I was not. I was just a fan at that point. Okay. So how did you how did you meet these guys, or did you know them before? Um, I didn't know them until uh, let's see. I came down here in June for an interview because they put out a thing that they were hiring an intern, mm-hmm. and so I sent them my resume and videos and stuff. And they're out of Missouri. Then, Where are they out of Missouri? They're out of Albia, Iowa. Oh, okay. So that's just south of where you are. Yeah, I'm from I'm from up around like Swiss 
Mercer, Iowa, which is central Iowa, but there, our home base is like southern Iowa, Albion, Iowa, around there. So mm-hmm. nobody's actually from here mm-hmm. except for, I'm the only one from Iowa, but everybody moved here when they started this hunting show. So gotcha. that's just kind of the progression of how everybody got here, I guess. So they brought you in as an intern, and they liked you, I guess, and the rest is history. Yep, that's pretty much how it worked. So what what did they have um, you uh, start to do once you came down there? Um, pretty much just hop back in with whatever they were doing. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. Just, just <laughs> back here, giving me crap. So. Oh, hi, Jake. How's um, it going, man? You can bring him on if he want if he wants to talk too. Okay, he's he's over on the deck. I'm just walking around the yard. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so pretty much just hopped right in with them, and they were it was super cool because it's just like a bunch of guys living together making videos. Right. So, I mean, it's, honestly, it was way better than I even thought it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be like a real maybe a schedule more stuff. It's just kind of... Like a real job you thought it was going to be like? Yeah, I thought it was going to be a little bit more like that. So it turned out to be pretty awesome because you got to make content and get it up. It doesn't... Nothing really has to be planned out or anything, so... Right. Um, nice. So how many, how many guys were part of it when you joined on? Um, it was... Well, the same as it is now, so it's Mindy, Greg, Aaron, Zach, Jake, and then now me, so. Okay. There's five, no, six. Gotcha. Um, so then, you guys are all there, you're making content. Did you ever think it would be what it is right now? I mean, on the channel, you've got 114,000 subscribers which is amazing. Um, I I ran into the program on Amazon. I'm I'm kind of a newer I'm a newer deer and turkey hunter. Um, yeah. So I would I would look at waterfowl stuff and fishing stuff all the time. But um, I was flipping through uh, my Amazon Prime, I guess you know, eight months ago. Yeah. And, and found you guys, or maybe something like that. Maybe maybe not even eight months ago. Maybe more recently than that. And um, that's pretty much why I wanted to start hunting. Actually. Oh really? Uh, yeah. So my my story is I'm I'm more of a new new hunter in that aspect. My my partner Kyle, who does this with me, who's who's not here right now. He he's been hunting for a while, and and. Yeah, watching watching you guys were kind of the motivation to go and do it. I was like, if these guys can, um, you know, be successful at it, they they seem kind of like me. I could probably, I could probably do yeah. it on my own as well. Um, right, which is the whole idea of what we're trying to show people is that anybody can do it. Right. Um, so I, we we actually hear a lot of people say that, which is pretty cool because like. I usually do the Facebook messages, mm-hmm. and so I get a lot of those, or I see a lot of those messages saying, hey, just wanted to thank you guys, you know, just watching you guys to help me get started and made me want to go out, so it's pretty right. cool to see all that. Yeah, I bet. I mean, I, I grew up in, in New Jersey where there's not too much public land, um, so I always kind of felt like I didn't have any resource to do that. And now I live in Illinois, in northern Illinois, near Chicago. Um, oh, nice. And there's really no public land. But I've, yeah. uh, I've found, I found a couple spots within an hour drive of me that are small and highly pressured. But I think I'm gonna, we're going to give it a try this fall. So that'll be my first cool. actual season. Um, so, yeah, you guys, have, you guys have been great about... Um, you know, showing me different ways. Like I was, I was pretty set on having to do um, initially without doing any research, just doing like a tree stand and just sitting in a tree for eight hours a day, kind of waiting, yeah, right. waiting for a deer, deer right. to come around. So, um, 
you know, the saddle stuff that you guys have been doing is pretty awesome. Um, who's that, who's that through? Is that tethered that you guys are using? Yeah, tethered. Um, finger sweet. Ha- how long have you guys been using the saddles? Um, just this past fall. Would you recommend that to, to some, like a, a new person who's never done deer hunting before, or would you suggest going the tree stand route first? backyard first before you get out there I yeah imagine. definitely you definitely want to practice in the backyard a little bit before you take it out right because it's kind of like you're leaning out and you're shooting and stuff so for a new hunter it might be a little bit more challenging but it definitely wouldn't take too long to get the hang with okay all right well might give that a try this summer then before before the season starts um where are you guys uh planning on going for for the next deer season you got all the locations picked out oh we don't i think the first one might be like north dakota but other than that i really don't think we have anything set in stone yet have you guys been out to north dakota yet um i don't think anybody's hunted there mindy's from there but and greg might have hunted up there a year or two but not that I know of. Has anybody hung up there too much? Is that how you guys kind of operate is, is trying to go to new places all the time and, and seeing what hunting is like around yeah. the country? Yeah, pretty much just go to all the states and see, learn about the new terrain and see what you can learn and show people through the videos us struggling and <laughs> trying to figure stuff out. So right. that's pretty much why. So how do you how do you pick which states every year? How do you all pick who goes to what area, or do you all go to the same place? Well, it's just kind of like a lot of it's not chosen or decided until right at the very end. A lot of times, it's just like, well, who wants to go here? Who wants to go there? I mean, no real way we decide it other than it's who wants you know, to go. Who, can, who wants to buy the tag? Who wants to? Oh wow! And they just—you're like, all right, you're going. Yeah, so I just bought a tag and headed down there. That's pretty crazy. And then, and then you guys spent a good amount of time down there, right? I mean, uh, you were. Yeah, in... we spent. We were down there for probably six days. I think. I think I shot mine on the sixth or seventh day. I think it was the sixth. But um, yeah, we were down there for that was a that was a long trip. Was that the turkey tour? Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about the deer tour. Okay, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, that is a long trip, especially then. Um, and then the, you went, you were in for the turkey tour. You were in Missouri too, right? Yep. And you yep. you got a nice time there. Uh, you and Jake, right, off the side of the road. Yep. Yeah, that was that was a good one. That was fun. I just I just watched that one a couple of days ago. Um, oh yeah. It was. Uh, I was laughing my ass off. I mean, well. <laughs> One minute before the uh, cutoff or something like that? Yeah, it was. We were back at camp, and uh, Greg and Sam Soholt were leaving, and me and Jake were going to help Sam pack up. And we're like, well, we got, you can only hunt till one in Missouri for turkeys. Mm-hmm. So we're like, well, we might as well go while we have some time left because we're going to have all afternoon to just sit around. Right. Or go scouting or something, you know, obviously. But so we went, and like the first or second place, I think we stopped and called that one and gobbled. So that was pretty sweet. And went and got it. Yeah, that is awesome. Um, so I guess I guess back to the upcoming season. I mean, do you guys do anything to prepare for that? You mean like the deer tour? Yeah, the deer tour. Kind of. I know. I know you don't have locations picked out or anything but North Dakota, but, 
I mean, do you have to get production stuff ready to go, or how does that all work? Oh, yeah. Just kind of, we're just kind of always working on different, like, getting everything kind of dialed in, especially as the season starts coming up, and we're, like, the video camera stuff, getting all that stuff figured out, and then, like, I want to get my saddle here soon, because, so I have some time to mess around with what I'm going to carry in every time, and stuff like that, so... Um, just kind of always tweaking with our gear and stuff every once in a while. Right. So are you are you doing uh are you not doing any tree stand hunting this year? Uh, I probably will a little bit, but I'm mostly gonna be hunting out of a saddle or on the ground probably. Right. How how is it doing uh you know still hunting from the ground? Is that way more difficult for a new hunter to do? I mean, how do you? How do you stay quiet? Is that just kind of a patience game? Um, yeah, I mean, patience is definitely something that I always think it becomes easier after you've seen some stuff happen, Mm -hmm. after being patient. Like, after something happens, like in a rut, if one runs by you, you'll just always think back to that and think, man, if I just sit, you know, another 10 minutes, another 30 minutes, another hour, maybe that'll happen. So it just kind of gets easier. Like, when we're still hunting, a lot of times, I would think of Zach, like, he goes super, super slow, just one step in front of the other. Yeah, he seems like that's kind of his favorite thing to do. I mean, he he seems like he's on the ground more than anybody. Yeah, it is, for sure. Um, Which, he's good at it, so, but you definitely have to be real patient and real slow and, or cautious, I guess, when you're going through the woods and looking for sign and trying to run into something. I mean, is it, is it harder to film that than it is to actually hunt that? I mean, that's got to be, like, how do you get the angles on that and not get seen or heard? Yeah, you definitely don't get as much footage, I would say, as you would out of a tree, but that's not necessarily true always, every time. But mm-hmm. um, a lot of times you can't see as far, so it's harder to get footage trying to line it up with the guys shooting too so it can be difficult but right. it's definitely a fun way to hunt yeah I can imagine um, you working with any new camera angles or anything different on the, the footage side this year um, I don't think so we got a shoulder rig now so that should be sweet for like still hunting instead of using a tripod or something right. a lot of times we'll freehand it but so you put a shoulder rig will be a lot more stable. Put a GoPro out there and kind of yeah. do whatever you want with it. GoPro. Usually we'll have a GoPro point back at us or over our shoulder or something. So right. that's always nice. That's awesome. Um, so you're fishing this evening. Are you are you videoing that? Um. Yeah, we're probably gonna leave here pretty soon, but. Is that going to be content for the for the page? Yeah, if we catch something, there it will be. There's a train about to come by, so this might be loud. Okay. If nothing else, we can we can always just cut this and. That is loud. Yeah, it's super loud. It's very fire out. <laughs> um, we'll wait. I'll wait for that to go by. We in the clear? Yep, I think you're good now. Cool. Um, so who who are the original uh, members? Was it Zach, Aaron, and Greg? Is that how it got started? Yeah, so they were, like, with Midwest Whitetail. Have you ever heard of that? Yeah, yeah. So they were with them, and then eventually they just decided they wanted to do their own thing, so... They broke off from them and started the hunting public. And Jake and Corn Dog were interns at the time, mm-hmm. so they decided to go with them. And that's just kind of how those five or six guys got started. And then I came in July. Gotcha. And you were you were the last piece of the puzzle, and that's all they needed. Yeah. So far, I mean. Might end up being more people. Never know. Right. 
Yeah, how do you how do you do that? Is it just kind of uh, you know we feel like we could add a couple guys to the team to get more more content, so we'll, we'll bring um, people into yeah. the fold. He'll be. I think we're gonna have one one for sure new intern this fall, and then maybe two in the summer. Um, the rest is kind of Right. Well, it's good. You can always add more buddies to the team, right? Oh, yeah. It'll be fun. Um, I saw you guys, you did some kind of scouting tips and consultations for some for some folks a little while back. Um, is that something you think you all are going to get into a little bit more? Yeah, I think so. In the future, we'll probably do as many as we can. Those are a lot of fun and teach some teach people new things and then we learn new things as we go to different areas especially down south is a lot of fun to do them down there because we don't have near as much experience down there as we do up in the midwest so right so you're learning there. learning the whole time pretty cool yeah um but yeah you get to meet new people and and a lot of times like when we do those all the people that come to them meet each other and they're usually from similar areas so they're always exchanging phone numbers which is pretty cool right so making lots of contacts making a lot of new friends yeah all sorts of stuff um so do you get requests from people to come and hunt their areas all the time i imagine with so many subscribers you're getting people say you know come help me figure out this area or that area Do you ever take people up on that sort of thing, or do you, is there way too many to, to do that? Um, not usually. Maybe if we're struggling in an area, we'll say, you know, hey, you got any tips for us? Mm. Where we, what we should be looking for or something? But usually we like to try and figure it out ourselves. Yeah, I guess that's half the fun of it, right? Oh, yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, how do you guys pick who's... Uh, going to be filming and who's going to be hunting. I know you mentioned before that, you know, you kind of just saying who's going to buy the tag. Is that just sort of luck of the draw or, you know, are you going to be, are you going to be the one hunting more this season or is it just kind of random? Um, it'll probably be just random, kind of like it always is. Like a lot of times we'll have a couple guys that we know and they'll be hunting and we'll say, hey, you know, we'll be hunting this turkey season. And then filmed during Tennessee and Arkansas. And then I was the first one to get a tag in Missouri. So, you know, it's always just kind of back and forth. Whoever has been filming a bit, then they'll switch to hunting and then vice versa. Man, that that Alabama turkey hunting looked really hard. Yeah, it was was tough. But, I I mean, that was my first out-of-state turkey hunt as well. So, um... I think next year I could do a lot better down there. You just figure, but, figured out how they work a little bit more? Yeah, and it was a lot more hills than what I've hunted um, around home, so it was completely new ball game to me, I guess. Is that is that because they can't, they don't hear as far because of the hills blocking the noise or something? Yeah, and just like how they use the terrain and different stuff like that. Kind of, you know, trying to figure that out. Zach was hunting with me, so he knew all about that stuff being from Ohio. Mm-hmm. So he was, it was a lot of fun hunting with him. But yeah, um, makes it tough. Yeah. Um. So, I guess kind of the the last last bit I want to get into really would be, you know, for someone new to to deer and, and turkey hunting, how would you how would you suggest someone get started and, and kind of, you know, get into that, that whole space? Um, 
I would say, like watching, watching YouTube videos is a lot of help. Like, you can learn most anything off YouTube. It seems like now, like I learned the guitar, and a lot of it I learned off YouTube. I learned the basics from my dad, and then pretty much from there I was just on my own learning stuff off YouTube. So I guess you can kind of apply that to to hunting as well, but. It's also nice to have somebody with you that, for at least a little bit, to help you. So maybe go to your like local bow shop or something and try and meet some people and and just kind of get get started from from that aspect. But um, yeah, I mean, just get out there and start trying different stuff. Yeah, I mean, it seems like you guys are. We're always throwing new stuff out there, seeing what works and what doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, you just move on to something else. Yeah. Yeah. Jake, Jake, I know he didn't, he learned tur- how to turkey hunt pretty much all by himself. And he was just hunting with buddies from school and stuff. And nobody had really turkey hunted. He had some people around town that he knew that were pretty good at it. So he was always asking them and just going out and figuring stuff out on his own. Right. But yeah, that's what I'm doing with oh. the bow. I mean, the bow bow is completely new to me. I've been I've been shooting a shotgun for a while and have done have done a bunch of waterfowl hunting and stuff like that. But um, the whole archery side of it is brand new. So I'm using my my dad's bow from like 1988 or something like that, um, which is way different than my buddy's compound bow that he's been using. Um, yeah. But it seems to work just as well. I mean, it slings an arrow pretty good. So I imagine as long as that's working pretty pretty well, I should be all right. Um, now it's just a matter of figuring out scouting and and hunting in that in the small areas that I do. Um, and I would imagine there's a lot of pressure. I mean, Northern Illinois has a ton of people and not a lot of land, so it'll probably be pretty tough to figure out how to find areas that are a little bit less pressured than um, what I've been seeing. So definitely, definitely going to be a challenge for sure. Um, yeah. You guys ever have any plans on, on going out West? Yeah. Um, Jake is heading out West with Ted Miller. This, uh, I think August they're going out there. Okay. I'm not sure exactly what time frame, but what are they going for? Yeah. Elk. Nice. Colorado yeah. or something? Wyoming. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, they're going to a spot where Ted went out there last fall and he called up or bugled up like two two bulls, I think. Mm-hmm. One really nice one and one decent one. But, yeah, they should have some luck out there, I'd say. That'll be awesome. So is that gonna? I guess yeah. that'll be pretty much the start of the new, new season for y'all then. I would say I'm pretty sure it's in August. It might be in September. I'm not totally sure. Right. But if it's in August, then it'll for sure be the first thing I'd say. You're not going out there. I'm hoping I get to go out there, but I'm not totally sure if I will be able to or not. Especially with this arm now. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's not going to limit your uh, your filming or hunting capabilities. I hope. No, I hope not. But I think it's supposed to be completely healed up by like August thirteenth. I think is when it's completely okay. healed or supposed to be anyway. So you got a summer of being in a cast, but then hopefully it'll be it'll be good to go by the time that's over. Yep, that's what I'm hoping for. Right. Well. uh... Hopefully, hopefully you get to go out there and film that. Um, you know, I'll I'll let you let you go and get fishing. But if I'm gonna be one of those guys, if you if you do end up in Northern Illinois and you want to hunt some highly pressured public land, give me a call. Um, All right. I'll probably yeah. I'll probably be bumbling around the woods not knowing what I'm doing for <laughs> for the first year or so. Um, but I got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, you'll get it figured out soon enough. Uh, 
So I, I think I think I need to buy a saddle and a tree stand and figure out what what to start with from there. And then uh, I don't think I'm going to be ready for the the still hunting just yet. But we will yeah. we will figure it out. Um, yeah. But you know I appreciate you taking some time and um, everybody that's listening. Make sure you guys give the hunting public follow on. YouTube and Instagram and where else are you guys? Twitter and Facebook and all those places? Yep, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, uh, Amazon. All right, and Amazon, all the social medias. Yep, pretty much. Awesome. Well, you know, hope your arm gets better soon. I know August 13th is the day, but maybe you'll heal fast and be out there sooner. (laughs) Who knows? Um, Yeah, thank you. I hope so. And uh, we will... Catch you on YouTube pretty soon. Yep, sounds good. Thanks for having me on. Thanks.